Welcome to today's presentation on conveyance calculations from the AAPL study guide. We're on page 72 and we've just worked problems A and B in the prior session. And so what we're going to look at now is um, the answer to uh, letter C here. Who has what interest? And it wants to know who, who has the interest. Adam, Baker, Big Oil. What is their specific interest in this um, scenario that's been presented? So um, let's go through the scenario again. Um, I, as I said, I've already done A and B. And A, I said Adam had the executive rights and the type of interest that he conveyed was a royalty interest. So now we're going to say, okay, what specific interest does everybody own? And I'm doing this separately because it's a pretty involved problem. So I wanted to separate it from A and B. Okay, so let's read the problem together. And it just says Adam owns a 100% mineral interest. So Adam owns a 100% mineral interest. That means we're going to take an oil and gas lease from the person that owns the minerals. That's going to be Adam. So he owns a 100% mineral interest in the lands underlying section 6. Adam then conveys to Baker a 1 eighth royalty. So Adam is conveying to Baker. And let's look at this language. This is what they were testing you in A and B. It's a one-eighth royalty in the oil and gas produced and saved. Okay, That is not the conveyance of a mineral interest. That is only the conveyance of a royalty interest. Basically A saying, hey, if I ever get a royalty, if I ever get a lease that has a royalty in it, I'll give you one-eighth of that royalty in the lease. So... Um, if it was minerals, it would say oil and gas in and under. Okay, so he's only conveying a one-eighth royalty. And since it's a royalty only, as I mentioned in the previous one, this is called a non-participating royalty um, interest. A non-participating, meaning that B does not have the right to get delay rentals or shut-in payments or ever produce on the land or use the surface. All he's entitled to is this one-eighth royalty interest, okay? So at this point of the game, A still has 100% of the working interest, and B has um, only this one-eighth or this 0.125 um, royalty interest if there is ever production from the land, all right? So then the next part of it says Adam then leases to Big Oil. So Adam takes his 100% and he conveys it to big oil, or rather, he really doesn't convey it, he actually only leases it. So he's only giving big oil the right to come onto the property, okay? Now, before A leases to big oil, if A wanted to drill an oil and gas well, A would have to foot 100% of the bill. There's no one else involved but him. So any cost of that well, which can run into the millions of dollars, as many of you well know, A, that landowner, that mineral owner, is going to have to take care of those costs. That is called a working interest, okay? The working interest, all it means is who pays the bills. If there is a well drilled, who pays the bill? And before Adam, before Big Oil comes along, Adam would have had to pay all the costs of that working interest. But when A leases to Big Oil, what he's saying is, okay, Big Oil, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you all of my working interest. So if there's ever a well that you decide you want to drill, and hopefully you will since you're taking this lease, you will pay all of the bills. So you, Big Oil, would then have 100% of the working interest, and all I would have is whatever the royalty is. And in this case, it's saying Adam then leases to Big Oil, reserving a 3 16th royalty interest. So, or a 3 16th royalty in the lease. So at this point of the game, Big Oil owns 100% of the working interest and A owns 0% of the working interest. Meaning if there's a well drilled, A is not going to have to pay any money. Big Oil is going to have to pay for all of the money by virtue of this lease. Okay, so... Big Oil owns 100% of the working interest, but they're giving to A a 3 16th royalty. Okay, so they're using the, the 16th here, 3 16th, all right? 
So then what would, so A then would own a net revenue interest. That means what money are we going to give to A once this well is producing? And that is a 3 16th net revenue interest. And then the question becomes, then what is big oil's then net revenue interest? Well, you think about net revenue interest is what you get after you pay your bills. You know, think about when the first time you got your first paycheck and all of a sudden you weren't getting paid however many dollars an hour you thought because they had deducted the taxes from your paycheck to your dismay. That's what a net revenue interest is. Big oil isn't going to get 100% of the net revenue interest because they have bills to pay. And those bills include paying the lessor, A, 3 sixteenths. So that leaves big oil with the remaining sixteenths, which is a 13 sixteenths. Okay, so A has zero working percent working interest. B, uh, big oil has 100% working interest. A has 3 sixteenths net revenue interest. And from the 16 sixteenths, B is going to have to deduct this 3 16th, leaving B with only a 13 16th. Now, what happens then, everybody with me so far? Okay, and if we want to do the math on this, I'll show you that if you're looking at a 3 16th to convert it to a, uh, a decimal, I'm sorry, we're going to go 3 divided by 16, and that's going to be a 0.1875 interest. And then if we want to do um, the 13 sixteenths, so this is going to be the, the, I'm sorry, the oil and gas company's interest, we're just going to divide 13 by 16. And that's going to be a 0.8125 interest. So let's fill in those gaps here. So then the 3 sixteenths, becomes a 0.1875, if we want to put it in a decimal format. And the 13 sixteenths, as we said, becomes a 0.1875, I'm sorry, 0.8125. 13 divided by 16. 0.8125. Okay, and so if we add 0.8125 plus the 0.1875, that is going to total to 1. So we've got to get to 100%. So what is the net revenue interest here? Is a 0.8125. Point eight one two five. Okay, so that is the net revenue interest for A and the net revenue interest for B. Now, what happens because A granted to B this one eighth royalty from this interest that they own, this point one eight seven five, we're going to deduct from that this one eighth royalty that they gave to B. So A really isn't going to get this full 3 16th because out of that 3 16th, she promised B if ever there was oil and gas coming out of the ground that I will give you 1 8. So her interest is going to be this 3 16th or this minus, I'm sorry, this 0.1875 minus this 1 8. 1 8 is decimal interest is 1 divided by 8. And that's a 0.125. So we're going to deduct from this a 0.125. So if we do 0.1875 minus the 1 eighth royalty that they promised B minus that 0.125 or 1 eighth. A is only going to get a 0 0.0625 decimal interest, okay? Because part of theirs went to B because they conveyed it in a prior instrument. 
So they're going to be entitled to 0 0.0625. And B is going to then get his 1 eighth or his 0.125. Okay. So then when we go to the question of who has what interest, let's just think this through. Adam is the mineral interest owner. Since he granted a lease, he no longer has a working interest. So all he's entitled to is his 3 16th net revenue interest minus the 1 eighth that goes to B. So Adam is only going to get a 0 0.0625 net revenue interest. Okay. Big Oil is going to have 100%. Oh, I'm sorry. Jump, jumping ahead. Baker then is going to get that 1 eighth that he was promised up here. So Baker is going to get that 0 0.125 net revenue interest. And then Big Oil, because they took the lease, they now own 100% of the working interest, but they gave 3 sixteenths away. Now they only own 13 sixteenths net revenue interest. So after they pay their bills, they're going to end up with 13 sixteenths or a 0.8125 net revenue interest. Okay, so I hope that was helpful for you. And now we're going to move on to conveyancing problem number two on page 72. Hope to see you there.